Hello friends, I'm Jonaki Ghosh and welcome to my video series on exploring mathematics using spreadsheets. In every session of this series, we are going to explore an interesting mathematical concept. You must be intrigued by this beautiful image on the slide. This is the image of a certain iteration of the Sierpinski triangle, which is actually a fractal. And in this video session, we are going to look more deeply into this fractal. So what is a fractal? It was Benoit Mandelbrot who had said that clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. This statement aptly describes a fractal. The term was first introduced by him in 1975 and is based on the Latin word fractus, which means broken or fractured. So it was Benoit Mandelbrot who had suggested that, you know, Euclidean geometry is not enough to understand nature. And for that, we need what we know today as fractal geometry. Fractals in nature uh, occur abundantly and they exhibit a very interesting property known as self-similarity. So let us try to understand what is self-similarity. This is a picture of a fern leaf. You must have seen this in many places. If you look closely, the leaf has a central branch and along which there are smaller leaves, which also have central branches, along which there are yet smaller leaves. So if you take a small portion of this leaf and magnify it, you will see that it actually resembles the whole leaf. Similarly, if you look at the branching of trees, a single branch may split into two sub-branches and that those branches also will split further split into smaller branches. So if you look at a smaller portion of this, it actually resembles the bigger branch. Again, if you look at vegetables such as broccoli or cauliflower, if you take a small portion of the cauliflower and magnify it, it actually looks like the whole cauliflower. Fractals exhibit self-similar patterns in progressively smaller scales, and that is what makes them special and different, and nature is full of such fractals. So now, let us come to the person who had actually developed this theory a lot. Wotswold Serspinki was a Polish mathematician who made significant contributions to set theory, number theory, topology, and many areas of mathematics. In fact, he spent much of his career in the University of Warsaw in Poland. There are three well-known fractals named after him, the Serpinski Triangle, the Serpinski Carpet, or the Serpinski Curve. Let us look at the Serpinski Triangle, which is an interesting geometrical fractal. It can be generated using a recursive process. So we look at, suppose, imagine that we have uh, an equilateral triangle. Uh, and now I'm going to and given that this is a let us assume this to be a like a cardboard piece shaped like an equilateral triangle and if I join the midpoints of the three sides so suppose these are the three midpoints I get four smaller equilateral triangles and if I remove the center triangle what I will get is this and now there are three smaller equilateral triangles and I again do the same process of joining the joining the midpoints of each of these triangles the sides of each of these triangles so suppose here is one here is a second one and here is a third one and if I remove these three triangles, smaller triangles, I will get this. And we keep doing this progressively. And we observe that uh, these, can be named, these stages can be named. So the first stage is actually uh, called stage zero because it is a do-nothing stage. And thereafter, we have stages one, two, and three. So let us ask some interesting questions to explore this practice. How many black Shaded triangles will there be, let us say, at the fourth or fifth stages? Can we find a rule for the number of shaded triangles at any given stage, say at the nth stage? Also, if the shaded area at the nth stage, can we find the shaded area at the nth stage if the area at stage zero is one square unit? And finally, what happens as n, the number of stages increases indefinitely? So I would request you to pause this video and think about these questions for a bit. 
So let us explore further. We had already seen that the Sierpinski triangle, so the, uh, here we are showing four stages. The stage zero is the do nothing stage. This is stage one, stage two, and stage three. And here in this table, we have marked the, num the stage numbers, and now we are writing the number of black triangles. So at stage zero, we have a single black triangle. At stage one, we have three smaller black triangles. And each of these three black triangles further split into three yet smaller black triangles. So there are nine black triangles at stage two and 37, 27 black triangles at stage three and so on. So if you really want to generalize this rule, we find that the stage number and the exponent of the number of black triangles actually match. And therefore at the nth stage, there would be three raised to the power n black triangles. However, if you look at the shaded area and assume that the shaded area at stage 0 is 1 square unit, then at stage 1 the shaded area will be 3 upon 4 because here it is divided into 4 equal parts and one part is removed. Thereafter, the shaded area at every stage will be 3 by 4 times of the previous stage. So going on in this manner, we can conclude that the shaded area at the nth stage will be 3 upon 4 raised to the power n. Now we find two very interesting geometric sequences having multiplying factors. So for the number of black triangles we have a geometric sequence 1, 3, 3 squared, 3 cube and so on with a multiplying factor of 3 whereas in the shaded area we have a geometric sequence whose multiplying factor is 3 upon 4. So what happens as n approaches infinity, that is, as the number of stages becomes very large? Well, as the number of stages becomes very large, the number of black triangles will approach infinity. However, the, the black area will actually approach zero. Now let us observe self-similarity within the Sierpinski triangle. Now look at this. This is stage three of the Sierpinski triangle, which has 27 small black triangles. Now if I take this one small portion and enlarge it, I see that there are actually three copies of this. So in fact, stage three has three copies of stage two, and this is stage two. And now if I enlarge a portion of stage two, which is in the circle here, we see this is actually stage one, and there are three copies of stage one. So stage 2 actually has three copies of stage 1. And this stage 1 comes here. And if I look closely at this, there are actually three black, smaller black triangles. And if I enlarge this, I observe that stage 1 has three copies of stage 0, which is this. And to generalize this idea, we could say that stage n actually has three copies of stage n minus 1. So isn't it beautiful? This is the idea of self-similarity and it can be easily seen in the Sierpinski triangle. Well, the Sierpinski triangle is also known as a Sierpinski gasket or Sierpinski sieve. And if you want to really explore higher stages, uh, you want to, for example, create higher stages of this uh, fractal, you would need a very evolved computer program. However, the Mathematica command Sierpinski n on Wolfram Cloud helps to generate higher stages of this fractal. So if you want, for example, if you want to generate this, which is stage 6 of the Sierpinski triangle, you would have to type the command Sierpinski bracket 6 in Wolfram Cloud and you would get this beautiful fractal. Well, now I would like to do a simple investigation on a spreadsheet to show you a little more about the Sierpinski triangle. So let me open a Excel sheet. So as we have uh, already marked the columns, in column A, I'm going to enter the stages and the stages start with zero. So let me input a formula where I enter A2 plus one. And when I drag the cell, I would like to go on till say about 20 stages of the Sierpinski triangle. So 
So let me ignore this here. And now the number of shaded triangles is actually 3 raised to the power of the stage number. And if I look at the shaded area, the formula would be 3 upon 4 raised to the power the stage number. So we see that at stage 0, we have one shaded triangle and we have assumed that the shaded area is actually one square unit. So let us double click on this and we see such a beautiful and interesting pattern. Right from the columns itself we observe that the number of shaded triangles grows very rapidly whereas the shaded area becomes smaller and smaller approaching zero. To graph this let me take you to charts and I select this column, go to the line option and here we see that the number of shaded triangles grows fairly rapidly. The graph shows, we can observe this property graphically. And if I look at the shaded area, we see that it actually approaches zero. So two very opposite things happening simultaneously as un n the number of shaded, uh, sorry, as n the number of stages goes to infinity. Okay, so now we get back to our, if you wish to follow the steps of simulation, these are there on the slides and this is just a slide repeating. So if you really want to explore the fractal numerically for higher stages, then a spreadsheet is a wonderful idea which shows the properties of the fractal. It is not possible to really draw the fractal at a very high stage because it would, as I said, it would require a very involved program but the spreadsheet at least allows you to explore the fractal numerically. Here is another interesting fractal named after Sierpinski, which is called the Sierpinski carpet. Here we have a single square and we trisect the sides of the square and join the opposite sides, the points of trisection. This will lead to nine smaller squares and we remove the center square. So this is actually a hole here. So this is stage 0, this is stage 1 and on each of these 8 squares we continue the process of trisection dividing into 9 smaller squares and removing the center square and this process is repeated. So what you can see on this slide are stages 0 to 3 of the Sierpinski carpet. Beautiful isn't it? And again we can ask interesting questions like we did before. How many shaded squares will there be at the 4th and 5th or higher stages? Can we find a rule for the number of shaded squares at the nth stage? That is, can we find the general rule? And can we look at the shaded area at the nth stage? And what happens as m, the number of stages, increases indefinitely? It's something that you should really explore for yourself. Wow, isn't this a feast for the eyes? Can you guess which stage of the Sierpinski carpet is represented here? Well, this is a bit of a challenge for you. And I would request you to pause the video and explore for yourself. But after some thought, you may notice that right in this corner here, if I just draw the boundary of this little square here, this is actually stage one of the Sierpinski carpet. And there are eight copies of that here. So this becomes stage two of the carpet and there are eight copies of this here so when I when I try to draw this further This is actually stage 3 and you would observe that this bigger square has 8 copies of stage 3 and therefore it is actually stage 4. So this is actually stage 4 of the Sierpinski carpet. Well, students enjoy working a lot with fractals. This is uh, the work of a group of grade 10 students who had created the Sierpinski carpet design 
using colored glazed paper and then they challenge their friends to find the red area at stages 2 and 3. So this is stage 0, stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. So are you really up to the challenge of finding the red area at stages 2 and 3? Go ahead and try it for yourself. Well, here is a very interesting project called the Sertinsky Carpet Project. Uh, it is a non-profit collective joint activity among children around the world. The aim is to create a giant size Sertinsky carpet with colored square stickers using the idea of self-similarity. It entails collaboration among teams and one of the outcomes of this project actually is a basketball court comprising of the seventh iter iteration of the Sertinsky carpet which is there in Emiria in Spain. So this is uh, the entire uh, basketball court has the Sopinski carpet laid out on it and this is actually the seventh iteration of it. So there is immense beauty in this fractal and the Sopinski carpet project engages a large number of children across the world in developing this beautiful fractal. So I would now urge you to create your own fractal and this is very much possible using simple pen and paper and drawing sheets that you have with you. So here is one using a square. So suppose at stage zero you have a square cardboard piece and just like in the Sopinski carpet you divide that piece into nine smaller squares and this time you may choose to remove the yellow portions, the four yellow tiny squares. So what iterative procedure was used here? Here the procedure is that again you trisect the sides of the squares and you remove these four smaller squares. And if you keep doing this, you get a very beautiful intricate pattern and you would also get very interesting uh, geometric sequences ar arising out of it. So if you count the black squares at stage zero, there is only one. At stage one, there are five. And each of these five lead to five uh, smaller squares at stage two. So there are 25 smaller squares at stage two and one to 25 at stage three. And likewise, if you look at the black area, if the area of the square at stage zero is one square unit, then at stage one, it is five upon nine because five uh, out of the nine squares are blackened. And these, this forms powers of five upon nine. And graphing this, you would again see uh, an idea very similar to what you saw in the case of the Serpinski triangle and the case of the Serpinski carpet. So go ahead and have fun with fractals and create your own beautiful fractals. Here are some resources which will help you delve deeper into fractals. Thank you very much. I do hope you enjoyed this session and I look forward to meeting you again on my other video sessions. Thank you.